Good morning, my name is Carl, and on my CV it says that I have problem solving ability. And I thought it would be better to show rather than to simply say. So last week I coded up a half a dozen Sudoku solvers, and uh, I've got five of them here to show you. Uh, the first one uses Excel, one using FileMaker and PHP, iOS uh, using Objective C and uh, an Android simulator using Java. So we'll kick the slow ones off first. This is an Apple script and you can see it, uh, it's using the guess and check method. It uh, takes a guess for the first empty cell and uh, keeps guessing until it finds uh, a cell that it can't put any number from 1 through to 9 in and then it backtracks to the point of, uh, of branching. And so you can see it pushing forward and then backtracking and trying again. And eventually that will solve the, the Sudoku puzzle. This one uses the same method. They all use the, the same basic algorithm. It's a good algorithm because it always finds a solution if there is one. So we'll kick off the FileMaker solution. And while that one's working away, we'll uh, demonstrate PHP which because it's compiled is much faster than each of them. There seems to be a problem here with FileMaker. Let's reset that. Oh no, it is working. It just took a little while to kick off. Uh, 1.8 seconds, so you can see that PHP is much faster and that's because it uh, compiles on execution. Our iPhone simulator here we click solve and uh, it almost seems instantaneous, 0.7 seconds. And Android, reset and solve, also under a second. So we'll let these slow solvers continue to churn and uh, I'll stop the recording and we'll come back when they're completed and then I'll show you how each one, uh, what's uh, working on in the background. I'd like to stress that uh, I'm not looking for a job as a puzzle setter. Uh, I've, uh, I believe the Sudoku is a good metaphor for the type of problems that arise in any uh, office environment. The problem might be how do I arrange the solar panels on the on the roof of this particular house, or how do I manage my workforce for this big event that I'm going to run. Or uh, at that event, there might be thousands of attendees and you want to capture data as they exit. Uh, there's a myriad of problems which uh, can be solved with the age, uh, aid of computers, servers, desktops, uh, iPads, and, and iPhones, Android phones, etc. So uh, we'll be back in a minute to look at uh, a bit behind the scenes. Okay. Uh, our slow solvers have now completed. FileMaker has finished and Excel has finished. And uh, let's have a look at how they work. There's actually a bit more to this spreadsheet than I showed you before. What we have is some formulas uh, that assist our solver in uh, determining whether a value is legal in a particular cell. So see this cell that has a three in it. If I change that to a nine, you'll see that uh, this cell detects that there are two nines and that there are no threes. Put the three back in, we'll just Apple Z. Yeah, not gonna work. And uh, now, nothing greater than a one. So if there's any number in any of these particular grids here that is greater than a one, we know that our solution is invalid and that we need to backtrack. This particular cell here uh, composites the results from all of those other cells and simply says in that particular range is uh, everything less than two. If uh, yes, then we have a valid number, otherwise uh, we are invalid and we need to backtrack. Let's look at the script. Okay, there's not a lot to it. We set a global and then we tell application Microsoft Excel. We set our global to false and we ask it to solve for cell one. So in solving for cell one, uh, we 
test and uh, check that the cell is empty. If not, we look at the next cell. If the cell is not empty, we uh, loop through the numbers from one through to 10, uh, sorry, up to numbers less than 10, so that's one through nine, and we loop through until we find one that fits. Uh, if the validity, now validity is the value at cell 10, 10. So remember that's uh, the, what's in that cell. If validity is equal to valid, then we move on to the next cell. If not, then we backtrack. And uh, this is where we use our global. It's important that after we uh, recurs, here's the recursion happening here and also here. So we uh, increase our index by one as in we move on to the next cell and we call solve. So that's our recursion. This little method calls itself in two places. And uh, on finding a solution, we set our global to true. Right? If we uh, get past the 81st cell, as in the bottom right hand cell, we get right through the puzzle and they all satisfy that valid criteria. Then we have our puzzle solved and then we have to get out of this algorithm going back up through 81 levels without interfering with our solution. And that's why we use this global. You'll see that uh, after our recursion, we go if solved, then return. Same here, if solved, then return. And that allows us to escape from 81 levels deep uh, without upsetting the contents of our solution. So that's basically all there is to it. This is just a little helper method, which uh, converts our index uh, to a set of row and column numbers using a little bit of division and uh, modular arithmetic. Very, very simple. So now that you understand the basic recursion method, explaining the other four solutions should be a little bit faster because we only need to look at how they differ from uh, the, the one you've already seen. So we'll uh, hide the Excel solution and have a look at the FileMaker solution. There's a little bit uh, more happening down below here. We have some uh, cells which allow us to look at other cells in this particular FileMaker database. So if I go Apple Shift D, this shows us the structure of the database. It has two tables, uh, data table and display table. And within that, in the display table, we just have uh, nine rows, each of nine numbers, and we have a row reference, a column reference, a group reference, and a test value. The log was just used for debugging. We look at the relationships from our display table we can look directly into the data table by our row reference and column reference so for example if i was to put a one in there and a one in there i'd be looking at the data in the uh, the first cell we can look at data via row uh, this one for example row reference to row reference and test value to cell value what that does is it allows us to look at other rows containing that particular cell value. So if, that, if there is more than one number in a particular row containing a particular number, then we know that we have an invalid cell value. So this little structure here allows us to write less code. We don't have to write little methods for looping through rows, columns, or groups. Uh, in order to check for duplicate values. We'll just close out of there without saving anything. And now we'll look at our scripts. And here is the sole script. It's about the same length as the uh, Apple script version. And here is the key uh, difference in this one. Rather than having all of those helper cells that uh, we used in Excel, this formula here because of the magic of FileMaker relationships, allows us to count the number of cells uh, that have the same value. And it just checks that they're all zero. It, uh, the number we're testing uh, must not exist in any uh, same row, same column, or same group. And if it does, then it's invalid. So that's our, our test there. And uh, the rest of it, it's the very same 
code, just written in a different language. All the same. So uh, next we'll have a look at PHP. Let's have a quick look now at the uh, PHP version of our solver. We'll put the FileMaker one away and uh, we'll remember that this was very quick, uh, less than two seconds to solve our Sudoku grid. Now the beauty of PHP is that you can edit it with a standard text editor. This is Text Wrangler which doesn't cost even a cent and uh, we're now into the world of low-level languages where you can create what's called a class and a class is just something which has properties um, and methods where it's uh, something that objective programmers take a little time to come to grips with but once they do their world is never the same because once you start programming objectively, you start to look at the world objectively. And uh, objective programming allows you to write code which is robust and reusable. Uh, now this particular solver class, it has about 150 lines of code, which uh, might seem like a lot, but I downloaded another solver and it had 500 lines of code and it didn't actually work with this difficult puzzle. So uh, I took the, the uh, part of that solution and I rewrote the solver class and I cut it down from 500 lines of code down to uh, 150. Now just to prove to you that this is the actual solver, this method here solution array from puzzle is involved in returning our solution back to uh, our index page or our starter page. So let's change this from returning our solution to returning the number nine. Okay, so we have to save before it invokes and rerun our puzzle. And you can see that it's return nines. Can we undo that? Yes, we can. And save again. And that time it returns our solution. Let's have a look at the, uh, the solving algorithm. It's quite elegant. And uh, it reads quite well. Here's our main loop where we're trying the numbers from 0 to 9. Try num from 1 to num less than 10. That's 9. It says check the row, check the column, check the group, and if they all check out, let's move on to the next number. And uh, basically the same code we've been looking at thus far. So that's uh, proof really that we uh, can write the solution in PHP and uh, indeed write a very quick solution. And because it's uh, reusable code, we return the solution in the form of an array. We could set this up, in fact I've done this, uh, so that it acts as a server. We can be passed in a puzzle from, via the internet and return the solution. And that's a very good way to solve the problem um, because once it's solved on one server, that uh, solver becomes available to anybody throughout the world who wants to use it. Okay, let's put away our PHP code and have a very quick look at the Java Android solver. So let's close quit tank text wrangler and put away our PHP window and uh, have a look at Eclipse and uh, the reason I don't want to spend too much time on this is because I'm not trying to pretend that I am an Android developer. I think the field of Android development has so much depth that you'd want to get a specialist if you had a project of any significant value. I would be quite happy to take an Android app and an Android app source code and port it through to iOS where I've spent thousands of hours and I feel I... Um, I would call myself a mid-level, perhaps uh, 
advanced mid-level iOS developer, but uh, I wouldn't pretend to have those skills in Android. But uh, here's the basic solver. It looks very familiar. Uh, there's our recursion happening uh, there and there, and uh, our familiar check row, check column, check group calls happening there. Okay, uh, I don't want to spend any more time on it. Uh, let's move on to my much preferred development environment, which is iOS. Let's look now at our iOS solution using Objective-C. And this is an environment in which I'm a lot more comfortable. I've spent thousands of hours developing an Objective-C and it's, a, uh, it's an acquired taste, but it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing once you get past that learning curve and uh, it all starts to fall into place. It's, uh, it's an objective language. And here we have a, a cell object, and here's the properties that we have defined for that object. We have a row, a column, a group, a value, a reference to the field on the grid in case we need to update it. We've also created an array of cell possibilities, and that allows us to optimize our code and make it run a little bit faster. So if we look at our view controller, this is what we do when we uh, create the, the view. Uh, it's all created programmatically. There's very little in the storyboard. If I look at this, it's just a, a blank layout. It's got our reset and our solve. And down here somewhere there is a little, there's our feedback um, text field. But the bulk of it, all of uh, these cells and these interface buttons are created using code. And that allows us to position them exactly where we want them and to experiment with the layout and uh, not muck around moving things by point and click much faster in the long run to uh, write the code. And it even does little things here, like when we get past the second cell, not remembering that they are indexed from zero, so zero, one, two, then we put this one extra point in of offset, then uh, three, four, five, and then we jump another pixel and we get another grid line there. And that creates the illusion of the uh, bolder, bolder lines. Um, as we build our array, we create our row, our column, our, uh, we initialize the value to zero, uh, our cell field reference, and uh, we add objects to our arrays. We add, create the puzzle array, a row collection, a column collection, and uh, in a Another method, we uh, create a group array. Our solver will look uh, fairly familiar, I think, by now. Here it is, it's the same basic iteration, but uh, there's a, here's where we optimize. Rather than looping through the numbers from, zero, from one through nine, we just loop through the possibilities, the, the numbers that can possibly be right for that cell. So for example, in this cell, we removed one, seven, and nine. We took out three, one, and four, and uh, we've already taken out one and nine. So for a typical cell, we're left with uh, probably less than five values that uh, could exist for that particular cell, and that optimizes our solving time significantly. Not much else to show you of note. I've got another version that runs in iOS that calls the PHP solution, but uh, this is the one that solves it without requiring a network connection. Um, I could talk all day about iOS, but uh, there's a limited amount of time that I can spend on YouTube. Cheers.